Hello, true art believers. This is Pearson here, and welcome to my YouTube channel where I make videos of acrylic pour paintings, live stream drawing videos, and have interviews with artists internationally around the world. Before I start, please, please hit that. Wait, no, no. Smash, smash the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell. I don't even think, do people even uh, use notification bells? I think that's kind of annoying now, like with all the apps that are out there, like you get notified for everything, right? Um, tonight, I will be talking with fine artist, Kate Simon. Kate lives and works in Florida. Kate's work is inspired heavily from abstract expression. There we go. Always expressionism that's way too many syllables i can i have a i have like a three syllable syllable i i have a three syllable uh limit expression yeah that's way too many for me i i can't do any more than 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 three otherwise i'll i'll i'll, I'll just totally totally tur turtly all right you said very heavy but <laughs> let's rewind it because uh, I see Kate is laughing real hard in the screen down below. Um, Kate's work is heavily inspired from ab abstract expressionism, using very heavy-bodied paint to create deep cut, deep cuts or deep cut texture into her work. All right, let's start. Thank you and enjoy the show. Kate Simon, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that was uh, probably one of the more stumbled intros I've had in a while. I think it's because it's Sunday, and Sunday for me is the a pit like a uh, the epitome or like the 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 uh, the, the the pinnacle of of laziness, uh, where where I've 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 like gassed out my entire week. I've been going full throttle, and then. Uh, at the end of the week, I just, I just can't, I just can't do it. And so Fair. like Sundays are really like Sundays, like Pearson light where I, I, I take things at like half speed and still get stuff done. So I'm happy with that. But like, you know, it's, it's Sunday. So Kate, what's going on with you? Yeah. So it is Sunday and that means I've just been relaxing all day. I, um, I don't, do too much on the weekends. If I do, it's just like, I may do a little bit of artwork. I actually spent some time in the sun today, just kind of relaxing and straightening some stuff up. And uh, yeah, that was, that's was that been pretty much it today. Actually, I've been watching The Bachelor in Paradise. They still I, have The Bachelor? I don't, I don't know how current it is. It's oh. probably, I think this is like old episodes, but I'm definitely like, this is the first time I've ever watched any of them, like uh -huh. ever. But some for some reason, I guess because it's new to me, I'm kind of like intrigued by it, uh -huh. as I did, am with trash tele television in general. So did, yeah, did the first? I don't remember. Uh, I never watched it. Wasn't there like the first Bachelor? Um, wasn't this dude that like w um, was posed uh, like posed as a, a millionaire, but he only he just made like thirty thousand dollars or something a year? Oh wow! Or, I or, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I, I don't know. I think it was like the first show. It may not be The Bachelor, but it was definitely like the first of that genre. And the the the, the twist was he's posing as a, like a multi million millionaire, and he like he gallops in uh, uh, on a horse that's not his. And but really, he's he's like a uh, like a fireman. You know, he just right. works at a, a, a firehouse and he makes you know good money, but he's not a millionaire. There's your trick. You're doing it for love. <laughs> so uh what trash trash tv what what is that is that that's a genre right or yeah, is that just I like mean, a label well yeah it's probably a label that i'm i'm giving it but it's just like reality tv and so ever since reality tv came out i've been watching it um like on and off throughout the years i don't even watch a lot of tv but for some reason i just like reality tv why why would you why do you think that why do you love or like um reality tv what's what's the what's the pool for you so, so like any kind of staging aside from that like there's something interesting about the psychology of the situation and the way people interact when they have a camera around them because a lot of it is real and then there's a lot of it that 
even the the characters or the people they you know I'm I'm interested in what happens when they become self aware you know mm-hmm. they're like oh there's a camera here how is their personality going to change I don't know I just get really interested in that dynamic so I've been watching it for a long time is your personality changing right now that you're on camera a little bit yeah because usually I'm very like very very relaxed and so i feel turned up just a little bit right now did you is did you have anything to drink like like uh, some some uh uh shots nah nah of espresso no 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 caffeine i actually i don't drink caffeine um i drink decaf coffee which has a little bit and uh-huh. i eat chocolate which has caffeine in it but i don't drink any any caffeine anymore so isn't that dark chocolate or is it all chocolate? I think all chocolate has a little bit. Yeah. What made you decide to stop taking caffeine or a coffee? Uh, I, ju- I didn't feel like I was getting to that deep level of relaxation that I needed to, to just like be able to rest and recuperate. So you, uh, um, define that. Like what, why, why did you need to rest? Was it like late night or were you taking a lot of caffeine later on in the day or, or is it like made you restless, restless throughout the day? Yeah. So I didn't really ever drink a lot of caffeine to begin with. I'd have like a cup in the morning and maybe mm-hmm. a cup after lunch. Um, yeah. Cause I do like, I write for a living, like during the day I write. And, um, my, my heart rate was just like elevated all the time. Okay. And I think most people are like, if you drink caffeine, you're going to have like probably it, 10 beats per minute faster than you could have. Yeah. And that's, it yeah, it does that. Um, so you write, you write for a living. You, you are a technical writer. What is that? You know, when you buy like a TV and it comes with a manual, you write manuals. Yeah. I, I'm the person that writes that stuff. That thing that most people like, they look at and they say, "Oh," and then they throw it away. That's, that's <laughs> what I do. Yeah, I actually, I actually read them. I try to. I nice. try to read them, um, and uh, like I have a, a file of like a file of them just in case I ever need them, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, but they're so big. Like, they're, 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 like you get like an instruction manual on how to on on like some really simple object, like turn it on. There you go. It's all, um, and then it's like five paragraphs or like the two pages long. And you're like, whoa, was way more information for this this product here. How does how does that work for you? Do you like do you like that? Does it is it enjoyable? Is that type of thing like really spark you when you work or when you do technical writing? Well, okay. To be fair, I got a creative writing degree. Okay. Um, so it's different. It's different than. I mean, there are some creative aspects to it, which I take pleasure in, but by it's very objective and research oriented and it does take a lot of my energy. It, um, it doesn't, I would say it doesn't, it doesn't energize me like art would. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it definitely doesn't calm me down. Like it's just very cerebral and, um, it's the kind of thing that I appreciate having art for in the evenings to kind of like yeah. turn my brain off and get me in a different state of mind. And how do you, how many articles a week do you are like, uh, right? Like how does that business work? Do you just get like, uh, orders for a, sp- a product that you got to write a, a, a technical document for? Uh, I'm laughing a little bit because no one has ever been this interested in this topic, but I'll go ahead and answer the question. Um, so basically, I work for an engineering company. Mm -hmm. And so we work in sprints, which is like a three week cycle. So within that cycle, there's like a software update, which means the manual gets updated and you update, you know, however many features, however many tutorials and pictures and all that. And then there's like more requests. It's riveting. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So does it involve like a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, like, it, it's like mentally draining uh, uh, work. It can be. Yeah, it definitely can be. Hello, shoebox. I have a fan. We have fans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, it, it can be really draining. Yeah, it can be. And 
how do you transfer that over to your art? Like, how do you, how does that after spinning, how long is the shift? Like a, like a day, is it six it's hours of writing, or eight hours, eight or hours. 10? Yeah, eight are hour you, day. Are you writing for eight hours or there's like four hours of like writing and then there's like four hours or one hour or whatever, four hours of lunch? No, there's definitely not that long of a lunch. I have actually 15 <laughs> minutes that I set aside for lunch. 15 minutes and lunch and then eight hours of, of writing. There are some meetings during the day. Okay. okay l- lots of meetings. There are lots of meetings, um, which I appreciate. And you got to take notes. I don't take notes very often. I just pay attention. But yeah, okay. it's nice. It's nice to have a meeting. A lot of people in the corporate environment complain about meetings. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, I can't get any work done. And I'm like, my brain is relaxing right now. I'm appreciating the meeting. So I have not one of the people to complain about that very often. And how, how long are you writing? Like literally writing? Are you, do you write by like manually or you type or use a, I, uh, you use an audio thing? Oh, no, no. I type everything. Yeah. I mean, you can't, there's no way you can type yeah. for or write for eight hours straight because you have to do a lot of research to figure out what it is that changed in the software to begin Mm -hmm. with. And then, I mean, that, that process takes longer than anything is all of the research. Kate, do you ever put any like Easter eggs into the manuals? Like a little, 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 (laughs) like if every, all the sentences uh, on one side are lined up that says a funny word on. (laughs) No, I've never done that. I mean, I've done stuff like that. Um, to see if people pay attention, mm. but it never, it never goes out the door per se, but I have done stuff like that just to be funny. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you were getting in, when you, uh, after eight hours of, of writing, you're exhausted. Maybe you don't have any coffee. You have, you have decaf and you're like, uh, I have my decaf, my Folgers decaf or my Starbucks decaf, my, my $20 Starbucks decaf uh, uh, coffee. I'm going to go into the studio. You have a, do you have a studio or do you have a space that you work in? Yeah, well, I call it a garage. That's the greatest space of all. Yeah, that's the, the, the garage is the studio. And I end up doing work in there. And sometimes I do it in, you know, in here. Sometimes mm-hmm. I do it in the living room. It's just wherever. Um, mm-hmm. I don't ever really like to stay in one place. So... I'm I'm all I'm all over the place. I think you you asked me um, when we were off air about being structured, like how structured I was as an artist, and I was like, yeah. "Ooh, Ugh. that's a good question." I don't think I'm very structured at all. It's like a hot mess, to be honest. And I think like because of everything I do during the day requires so much structure, I just don't want to worry about it. Yeah. At all. Because you've you've been you've um <sighs> like there's there's this. Thing where you um, you use up mental energy to to organize your day, and if you're 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 doing very strict like rules with your technical writing, and you're and you're organizing it all day long, right? Uh, and maybe uh, having the the freedom to out like locate wherever you want to is it allows for a better um, execution of of work. Maybe. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, because this is my theory. I think however you operate in a kitchen is the type of artist you would be. So in a kitchen, are you the type of person that says, I need all of my ingredients out before I get started? I need everything chopped before it goes in the pan. Are you that kind of person? Or are you the kind of person who's taking stuff out of the fridge, you know, as you're needing it, throwing stuff in? There are, you know, doors that are open all over the place, drawers that are open. Mm-hmm. What, how are you in the kitchen? Uh, can you alternate from that? How so? Like, what if you're like, you're, you have 50% of the stuff you need and then some of the stuff might not be out because you didn't know you needed it. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, yeah, sure. There's like a spectrum. Okay. In terms of preparation. So you're like 50% there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't like. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't really think about like that. Maybe it's it's so subconscious that I I don't think like well I have all the stuff out there that's now I'm ready to go. Um, but yeah. um, what I typically do is I'm I'm like uh, cleaning as I uh, yeah. 
as I'm cooking, mainly yeah. because it's the only time to I actually have to clean. Because <laughs> like, well, I can't do anything while this is here. Well, I might as well put some dishes up. Because otherwise, if I'm not put the dish, I don't put the dishes up. I won't have time to do it after the fact. I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of multitasking, yeah. and then the eggs get fried. You're like, oh well, I'll eat the eggs fried. I don't care. There's, there's eggs, uh, and so forth. So, you, what kind of person are you with that? No, I'm exactly like that uh, to where I will burn my food because I've decided to try to be efficient and clean while I'm cooking. And it, it happens probably 75% of the time that I would burn something or it just go like a little too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I didn't uh, in my last place that I lived, I was like, I don't want to cook. I don't have enough space. And some people need space in the kitchen because they're a little unorganized. I'm one of those people. I just like to have lots of room to put like all these things because I don't want to, to, pre to prep everything. Like it's a learning process, but yeah, it's a little crazy. And same way, same way. in in terms of like being in a studio space, I'm, I want like all of this space so that I can be kind of free and put stuff everywhere and not feel small and confined. Do you, uh, is your garage strictly the studio or is it, you actually park your car in there? No car, no but car. there is like, you know, a lawnmower in there, a you know, stuff like that, which is not fun to see because I just want it to be art stuff, right? Okay. Yeah. And um, your work is about meditation or, or meditative. It's, yeah, it's meditative. So especially like, so I have some Pollock works. They're inspired by Jackson Pollock. And so something about that work specifically is extremely meditative and calming. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard some people say they don't, they may not see why it would be because it looks kind of chaotic, like the execution of it. Uh -huh. But a lot of the movements in that artwork are very, um, they can be repetitive. So I can circle around a canvas, for example, and I can use the same movement as I'm going around the entire canvas with one color, then I can pick up a different color and do it. And you don't have to uh, be too exact about it. There's something really nice about the surprise of it, of what it turns into, kind of like with what I think core painting is like. Yeah. You have a general idea of color, right? And then you're surprised by what it turns out to be. Yeah. Yeah. And how the, the cells uh, form. So do you... Um, when you're doing your Jackson Pollock style, are you throwing cigarette butts in there? <laughs> no. Did you read that he does that? That he did that? I believe he did. Didn't yeah, he like throw like threw like dirt and whatever he found and he'd throw it in there, you know, like as he was working? I don't know. I, I read a lot about his work and his style in the beginning, and I, I tried to follow it pretty closely, like in terms of like a lot of the materials he used and um I mean, I read that he, he used latex paint from the hardware. He used brushes and he used um, the paint sticks and you know, stuff. And I, I've tried to go a little bit further and pick, you know, other objects too to use just mm -hmm. to see what would happen. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't used the turkey baster. I've heard that he used that too. I never, I never actually used that, but um, mm -hmm. never heard about the cigarettes though. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I maybe I, I'm uh, misinformed, but I thought he would throw some cigarettes in there because he was he was a he was a, a liquor drinking uh, artist who, <laughs> who apparently went really hard in the the liquor paint, uh, way on the deep end. Um, as a writer, as a creative writer, have you ever considered considered writing a TV or a movie script, or have you a few like you know locked up? Oh, I don't have anything locked up like that. Um, I thought about that a lot when I was younger. When I was younger, yeah. I de I definitely was interested in that kind of stuff, but I never really pursued it because, literally, right after I graduated, um, I ended up getting a job writing for software. And I had, you know, I've just kept telling myself when I get home every day, I'm going to write. I told myself that for a couple of years and it never happened. I was uh, too drained to look at a computer screen in the evening. I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. Like, I, I can't sit down uh, long enough to do anything like this. Like, 
Um, and for a really long time, I just didn't feel, feel very well because creating is how I relax and it's how, you know, I, I energize myself, but, um, because the job and the kind of work that I do during the day, it made it really difficult for me to connect creatively in the evening. And I, it wasn't until I started doing, you know, art again, that I got back into that space and started feeling better. So. Yeah. Um, the, the whole, that's just that's the weirdest thing. Like to, to do that type of, like, this is, this is the weird, like this odd little situation. A lot of people are in like, Oh, chase your dreams. Right. And like you got to put in that, that second shift at the end of the day. Uh, mm -hmm. And you really got to grind it out to get, further right so you just basically you you work and then you gotta work harder right so uh you basically you're the, the writing all day and then you like well i've been writing all day now i gotta go home and write some more but only yeah. using a different part of my brain i'm already i'm already tapped out let me just eat something or did you did you ever even begin writing something or was it or you were just so so exhausted i've written poetry um, okay. And short and a lot of short fiction. And that's about the the extent of it. And I've even um, put together a poetry manuscript and I think I submitted it to Macmillan, but I never heard. Um, actually, they let me know that that didn't work out. And I, um, I just didn't feel I didn't feel it within me to pursue it beyond mm -hmm. that. There may come a time in the future where I, you know, have interest in it again, but for now, yeah. I think, you know, painting is my priority right now. And it's the thing that I'm most, most excited about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do and you that, write also? Uh, I, I write rage notes in my journal. Rage notes. Oh my God. What does that look like? Well, I was, I was joking, but the. <laughs> <laughs> the I imagined you just like doing this on the paper. Like, <laughs> crazy. It's, it's, it's mainly, uh, um, it's maybe, it's kind of like David Goggins, uh, 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 self-deprecating stuff like why you, you you stop stop wasting your time on television you got you got work to do you know uh as a, motivational as a, stuff yeah like so, <laughs> uh, like as the like to to inspire you to to get off your butt and 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 work a little bit so i i guess the writing uh uh i i, I will admit i had i was writing something it was about gummy bears and they were going on an adventure and um uh i th i think the 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 what it was the theme was they lived in a world of of like happiness and sunshine but there was a a a crack in like the uh the the, the wall and outside lived it's very if i think about it, it's very like uh have you heard of this anime called uh attack on titan i have not heard of that well, uh, it's kind of like that, but only with gummy bears. So, in Tackle Titan, is all they have these walls. All on outside the walls are giant, like human, like giant, basically giant humans, and it it they have these walls to keep the humans uh, to keep them out because they'll just like they're like these mindless, they're like giant zombie human type things, and they just eat other humans, and so they have these giant walls to protect them. So uh, the the story is about these gummy bears and they're having fun, and they work in a sugar factory, and they <laughs> and outside the walls, uh, there's these characters that are uh, that were called I think they're called mouthers, and uh, uh, and what they would do is they would they would uh, they would eat the candy like the gummy bears. Uh, once they got inside the, the the walls and how they would do it was through like a form of hypnosis, right? Where um, they're uh, uh, they just, they, they like smell something really good. And the, the, the gum bear smells something really good and they get like, they're like sirens almost and they, and they, they get smell something really good and they get closer and closer and then the mouthers eat them. But right, be, right, right at the point where they, they, they realize that they're not, what they think it is they see them what they truly are and they're like uh they're supposed to be like giant molasses covered uh uh, uh like sugar demon things i guess oh, that's that terrifying that have that are supposed to have um 
like like a uh, like like candy that was rotted or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was it was silly. I don't know. Was a, uh, <laughs> that's all I wrote, and I stopped it because I then then uh, I was like, well, I don't know where this is going, and I'm not really good at writing. And then then it got into a, a weird tangent where it wasn't about them. It was it was actually a, a guy trying to. <laughs> and then it like uh, it, it turned out to be it's actually they're this is actually all made up. This is inside per, some person's head who works at a at a bar, and he comes home at night and he writes. And then, Do you work at a bar? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course. So, and he comes home. It comes home at night, and he writes. And he writes this story. And um, I don't know. Uh, I think it was going to be like some like something that were like the characters come to life. I don't. I don't know. I think it stopped there. I got real busy because I, I was like, I'm. I'm like, this is taking up my art time. I gotta. I gotta. Yeah, you know. but you can illustrate it now. Yeah. Well, that was the intention to make it like a a, a like a an illustrated novel or like a, I thought that would be cool um, to do. Uh, this never happened. I still have like the, 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 the writing. Um, I don't know. It was weird. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. So my, 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 my extent of writing is like um, journaling and uh, like gratitude stuff. And what 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 I would do to, to accomplish in the day, you know, like three things I would do to to make it to make the day great, you know, I have like a little gratitude journal, and then um, it's usually very simple stuff, like three things. Where uh, what do you what are you grateful for? Like, well, uh, I'm grateful that I'm up today, that's for sure, and uh, so let's check. Uh, usually, I'm too tired to think of something really really clever for what may, what I'm grateful for. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like, what would make today great? Uh, and I'll answer that question. Like mainly it's like sucking it up and going and working out, <laughs> you know, um, na uh, like, uh, having a great, like for on days like this, I was like having a great conversation with the artist I'm talking to, you know, or like, hopefully I have a great rapport with Kate, Kate Simon today, yada, yada, yada. Right. Um, yeah. and then they're like, or affirmations like I am super awesome, and then that's it. So and how this, long have you how long have you been doing that? Uh, well, I, I, I do, I've done it off and on for a few years. Um, usually I start off pretty strong, and then all of a sudden, like I get I get tired of it. <laughs> well, do you? I mean, do you notice a difference when you stop doing it? Um, less ideas occur. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, like m maybe there's like, there's like less ideas that I have. Um, and I'm, I'm not as on point with my schedule. I know. So it's providing some level of focus for you. Yeah. Uh, and I need to start doing it more, but I've also been doing some research on how to properly do some journaling that kind of makes me more successful. Like one is actually, um, one is like has a quantifiable affirmations, like, um, do this many, uh, live streams and you put a little check on each mm -hmm. one. So you see like things occurring in, in the, the, uh, the journal, you know? Okay. And so like visual goals that are actually being achieved, not in real time, but definitely daily. And that, that's kind of like reassuring. I've, I've heard like, uh, from some people, if you want to create a habit, uh, having something visual helps. Like I, I heard some people would have like a, a, a jar of pennies or a, a jar. And then they, every day that they would do something, they put a penny in there or do that thing that they need to be doing. They put a penny in there and pretty soon it fills up and like, wow, look at that jar of pennies that I filled up by doing that thing. You yeah, know, well, that's, that's habit stacking. So they're saving and doing whatever other habit they're creating at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Uh, or like Jerry Seinfeld said that he would every day he'd write a joke, whether they'd suck or 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 they're good or not. He would he like put like a giant X on his calendar, and like every time he see that X on his calendar, he knew that he he wrote a joke. Uh, a joke, and if he saw didn't see one, he knew that he he missed that. And you know, so like there's a something to kind of like um, attach it to, I guess physical like a physical goal that's being achieved via in the material world, I guess. So that's what I'm starting to do. 
I think it's working. We'll see. And you do, you do that with your art too? With my, um, what do you mean like my art? So do you uh, make a practice of creating something every day and not worrying about whether it's good or bad? Um, I've tried to, I'm, I'm, I'm doubling down on it. So normally I, I do do something every day. Um, and it's either like a, a very, very, um, uh, monumental. Like I spend a, like usually try to allocate a certain amount of time in, in the morning. And sometimes it, it's, it's more than two hours. Sometimes it's less than two hours, you know, it's, a, and, uh, <clears throat> so I usually do something every day, but now what I've been doing is I've been doubling down and, and, and setting up a, a, a goal of live streaming it. So if I don't do that, then I, I, I kind of like lose, I lose the day or like lose the morning. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's something that I, I'm doing to, to like begin a, a new stream of habits to, to uh, improve myself. Um, and it's very hard, you know, it is I, hard. The, the whole, the whole aspect, like the intersectionality of uh, sharing your work, there's like an element to it where it holds you accountable because you know, people are expecting to see something, correct? Yeah. Like you're like, Oh, I got to make something a day so that I can post it. And I started out that way and it became way too much pressure. Like really quickly yeah. I decided this isn't, this isn't healthy. Like for me, like it doesn't yeah. work for me. Um, it does work really well though. If you're trying to dismantle your ego and you you're like pushing yourself and you're like, I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to show like, uh, that they're not all good. Like if that's your point and you're, you're like, they're not all good. That's fine. I I'm not as great about, um, being vulnerable right now with everything that I'm doing. Cause it's, mm -hmm. I don't know the pressure of creating for the sake of posting puts me in a really weird headspace. I think like the people that do that, they're maybe farther along than I am. Yeah. Cause you know, I am, I am pretty vulnerable and uh, forthcoming when I say like a lot of the reason that I do create to begin with is for mental health, like for my mental health and to, to like achieve peace of mind and be able to process a lot of the stuff that I'm thinking throughout the day. Um, so I'm not in a rush to try to, to, I, I guess, portray that I'm like further along in my mental health journey than I am. Yeah. Which is, which is why I'm like, well, you know, give yourself a break. You don't have to post every day. Like that's for, that's for a different kind of person. Someone else can handle that. If you don't think you can handle it right now, just don't do it. Well, uh, the, the, um, the, it's mainly to get me to draw. Like, I don't really, I, I actually don't post as much as I used to mainly cause it's just, uh, it becomes like, it feels like work sometimes. Like I gotta type right. this all up and then I gotta just basically this rebroadcast on everything other on all the platforms and sometimes um i i wake up with every morning with the intention of making a just clicking a photo but like uh because i have enough work i have thousands of works uh i could just start i could post every day forever yeah. <laughs> and like indefinitely forever and i'd still be good because i'm making more each day right. um and i don't have but like those posts don't that take time. Like that's 30 minutes of posting, like just to do, cause you're doing it on Instagram, you do it on, on, on Twitter and all these other places, you know, even if it's really fast, you still got to do that. Uh, it still takes some time. It know? does. Yeah. And, and if you, if you're like me and you're on technology all day to begin with, you're like, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so it, it's a, it's a grind. It is. Um, it is very much so a grind. Uh, I, I lost myself. I don't, I, we went from, uh, I'm out me writing stuff now. Now I'm, I just don't know where to go, where to begin. Um, so I think you just need to get back into it. And get I think you should, what? you're writing. Oh, my writing. Yeah. I want to, I, I actually, in the, in the journal, there's, uh, there's some goals that I'd like to write some children's books. Cause I think they'd be like the easiest segue into it. Like, cause I, I already have like, uh, uh, um, uh, was it like a, 
second grade writing ability. So, you know, I think I can handle that. I think I'll be able to write, you know, some words on that level. I think the world <laughs> needs more second grade writing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah uh, and, uh, and plus the, the image, like my, 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 uh, my drawing style can uh, lends pretty good to that. So I think I can, uh, um, I can compliment it with my, my childlike, uh, drawing technique or visuals. Okay. So you do digital art, right? Uh, only, only for digital, uh, portraits, like, uh, di digital dog portraits and, and, and portraits. But like I did that, those digital portraits as a way to, to, um, dip my toes into the practice. Cause I was really inexperienced in that. I actually am a, like a, a, a painter by, by, by trade. Whenever I, have time I paint, but I haven't painted for like a year. <laughs> so like, I've been so busy with digital work. I don't have time for painting. Right. Well, what do you think of the whole NFT craze? What's NFT? Okay. I don't remember the word. Like it's like non fungible something. I don't remember. NFTs oh. are like those digital. It's like any digital art that can be sold online. It's highly speculative and it's supposed to be something that people can invest in. And then sell for much, much more money at a later yeah. time. It's I've been crazy. About that. They, uh, it's like blockchain art. Yeah. You know? It can be a GIF. It could be like a GIF. Yeah. Which is insane. And they're selling for like thousands of dollars, like these little things. I, I, I've only briefly... I need a I need a little bit more research on that. Um, yeah. I've, I've got like a few videos saved up about that type of stuff, and um, I I don't know enough about it uh, to really comment. Other than I, I know that it's like based off on blockchain, and so someone buys it, they they own the only one of that image. Uh, it seems, as you said, very speculative. It seems weird uh, to do. Uh, maybe in the maybe less weird in the future when you um, maybe less f weird for like the these super rich people that are able to like uh, uh, have like a, a screen that they they use strictly to present it you know like they, it becomes like a giant uh, wall like uh, they wall they they mount the piece on a wall and they basically basically have a, a screensaver you know of the yeah. Piece. I guess that's what that's what it would account to be. I don't I don't know. I don't know enough of of that topic. I just briefly yeah. um do you listen to music when you paint or write? So sometimes I listen to music. Um let's see, when I'm writing. I think I'm more the kind of person to listen to like NPR in the background. When you're when you're painting? Or writing. Yeah. Kate, we're getting a lot of questions here on the side, a lot more than I'm used to. Okay. Uh, if you look, there's the comment section. Um, so that, that, that question about um, listen to music when you're, you listen to music while you write, doesn't that distract you because the words? No, if I'm listening to music while I'm writing, I'm listening to usually like instrumental music and it could be instrumental music. That's like, um, something that's popular, actually something on YouTube that I always come back to. And it's like chill lo-fi hits of 2020. Like I oh. keep going back to that video. I don't know why, but I really, really like that. Um, but yeah, like simple stuff. So this, just rhythms and beats. Yeah. Okay. So nothing that, uh, like no words that cause you to think about or the focus on the, the, the rhetoric that's occurring there. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have, we have a person here, uh, who wants to know, uh, Daniel wants to know, uh, if you could comment more about, um, mental health and, uh, here, let's just, you can read it right here on the side. So, um, Daniel wants to know more about your painting, uh, and how it helps with mental health health. Okay. He said, I also feel that on some level for myself, are you comfortable speaking about that a little? Is this a process for your abstracts that helps personally painting for enjoyment? Um, so 
yeah, specifically with abstract work. Um, so what I've noticed, and this is not, this isn't just for people that are creating abstract work. It's also for people that are viewing abstract work. So, um, something about abstract work is different than representational art. And just for people that are watching representational art is just anything that represents something. So you can clearly tell that there's a house in an image or a car or a person. So those kind of um, works are different for your brain. When you uh, approach a, a piece of art like that, you start processing completely differently than if you were to view an abstract work. So when you view work that's abstract, you are conceptually thinking. So what ends up happening is you have a very global perspective of the work and your eyes don't necessarily settle on any one part of the, the artwork. So imagine you're looking at something could, maybe we could show like one of my pieces and then like one of the abstract pieces on the side. Um, so for example, let's see. Yeah, so, and this is just a piece I recently did. If you're looking at this, you're not really thinking um, about what is, you know, identifiable here. You're just kind of, your eye is going to be moving throughout. You're going to be looking for color movement. You might be looking for um, like the blocks, but you're not going to be thinking, oh, that's a house. That reminds me of this. That reminds me of this bill I have to pay. Your, your brain is able to completely get away from all of that. Um, I've had people contact me and they've said, oh, I feel like, I feel at peace when I look at your work, or I feel like I can sense healing in your work. Um, which is, a, it's like the ultimate compliment um, because it, it does feel that way for me too. It feels really freeing and liberating to turn my brain off because it's something that I've struggled with a lot. Um, I think constantly I, I'm, you know, like a classic o overthinker. So to be able to shut it off and just focus on something visually that, you know, I can't really settle my eye on anywhere on the page or the, the canvas is like really nice. And I think that that's um, helpful for people in general when they're approaching art. And it's not to say that you can't achieve that, you know, looking at representational art as well, but scientifically there are studies to support that uh, people have a completely different relationship with artwork that's like this. I hope that answers that. What, What what uh, um what studies are you referring to? Like, what have you read about uh, in the, in that that field? Yeah, so I when I was first starting, and I I was thinking about um like who how can I share this work with people? You know, who who's like a good person who'd appreciate this? I, I started reading about um, abstract work a lot in there's like psychology websites online. I can't tell you like the specific one. I'd have to look it up for you and maybe I can share it with you like after this. Um, but yeah, there's an article I read. I think it was on psychology today. I'm not sure. I'll mm -hmm. have to find it and see because I wanted to know um, not just like what are the, you know, what are the scientific benefits of art or abstract art? I wanted to also know um, what kind of people appreciate abstract art the most. I had a weird feeling that it it could be tied to like a specific demographic. I was like, is you know, do do men like um, abstract art more than women? Um, is it a certain age group? You know, I was really curious in finding who the buyer of my work would be, and so I started reading a lot about it in the beginning. And who is the buyer of your work? Who are they? Uh, so far, it's been fifty fifty. 50 50. Um, yeah, I thought that it would be different, but it's been about 50 50 so far. Um, I did, there is like some advertising I've done on Facebook. And you know, that's like really cool because you can see the demographics. You can see like who's actually viewing the work. Um, and you can see down to the age, the age group, of course, um, the sex of the person, all of that stuff. So I was really, really curious to see what it would look like but it ended up being 50, 50. I do think that, um, I do think that art buyers tend to be a little bit older though. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think that, uh, I'm going to get very far advertising work to, you know, like teenagers, even though they may appreciate it. I don't think they're the buyer. Right. Yeah. 
yeah. 20 year olds either you know they're like uh like uh art or night out <laughs> like they're, they're more interested like, let's go out this weekend and 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 have a time good time rather than let's spend money on on art you know yeah because i mean people start considering art to be an investment when they're older mm-hmm. and even even i like didn't spend a whole lot of money on art uh, myself at the point you know that I, I moved into the house that i'm in i was like i really want to invest in art and put it everywhere and i started looking at prices and i said oh I think I'll just make my own art, you know, like it just made more sense for me to make it because, and that, you know, that helped motivate me to get back into it a lot. You're like, Oh, yuck. These are expensive. They, they can be expensive. I, I live in an area that's very saturated by art there. It's an artist community. So mm-hmm. I can go, you know, to any of the stores here. They have so many um, people selling art on consignment and I'm seeing art, that's like on average, like going up to like $3,000 for a painting. I've been in one artist studio and he's got art for, you know, 20 something grand for, for a painting. They are amazing. I'm not going to lie. They are great. Like it's like some great work that you're not going to find anywhere because he makes his own paint and it's like extremely thick and stuff. Um, But yeah, like seeing the, seeing the art in the area, what's possible uh, and that it does, it's definitely moving. It, it was very motivating for me to say it is doable for me. It's like something that I could spend my time doing and, and see a return on. And it's something that I feel like even at a much lower price point, I can, can benefit from. Are you selling work on consignment at some of those stores? No, I'm not because I'm not, I don't feel like I'm ready to be doing that. Not at all. The, the consignment, all of the agreements that I've heard about, I've asked, I've asked them all, and they say that it, they're about fifty percent. So they take, oh, wow. yeah. So while it's beneficial for you, like to enter into a market and get some notoriety, and the, you know, I think the other benefit of that is also that uh, if you want your art to be a thousand dollars, you want the price to be recognized as that, and you you have it listed for a thousand there. If you're okay with getting the five hundred, which you should be, like especially yeah. if you have a day job like me, you should be fine with getting the five hundred dollars. Um, it's good for that. But I kind of just really appreciate being in control of it and having the website and kind of yeah. approaching it that way. Just that's for now. that that's really hard. Uh, like a really high percentage for consignment. Like I yeah. I, I I thought like. From my experience of, of of seeing consignment shops there, well then um, maybe I, I'm not in a, a, a giant saturated market of art, or at least the areas that I'm looking at consignment that I've looked into consignment is like twenty percent at most. Really, some, some really low, like astronomical low, astronomically low. Like I would understand if the the places that you were looking at were were strictly galleries because galleries take fifty percent, but consignment mm-hmm. shops, you know, who 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 are consignment, they're not, they're not strictly selling art to selling other stuff, you know, mm-hmm. taking 50%. That's really high. Now I would definitely understand if it was a galley that was taking 50% because they're, they're, they're in the business of selling your art, you know? Um, what did, did you talk to the artist and ask, ask, uh, the artist how you could sell your work for $20,000? I didn't talk to him. No. Um, I think I can, I could sell my work for that if there were demand for it. Okay. I mean, that's the, that's the simple answer for everyone, right? Like you have to create supply and demand. So I'm, I'm starting out. I started out at the end of last year. Um, and I have maybe 300 people following me on Instagram and that's about it. A lot. Like, I think I have to get, I have to grow an audience and then once there's a, a higher demand for my work, I would feel comfortable in raising the price. Yeah. Now, some people would argue, well, if you're advertising it online, they don't know what your price used to be. You know, they might pay it. You could just put all of your paintings for $25,000. Yes, you could. You, I guess if you want to. I don't know. 
I don't, I kind of don't want my paintings to sit around in my house forever. I kind of want them to leave so I can do more work. Yep. That's um, the, I mean, that's the point for me because I, I want to create. It makes me feel good. I don't want to make a sale for $25,000 if I only do one in a year. That's not the point for me. Yeah. If you sell one painting and then you're like, well, that's great. I got, I got $25,000. Technically, I cannot work the rest of the year or, or like half the year. Uh, but I still got like 50 paintings in my garage. What am I going to do with all this paint? Yeah. And to be fair, the, the studio that I went in that had the $25,000 paintings, he had a lot of work in there. Like it was yeah. chock full of work. I'm yeah. sure he sells them though. I'm, I'm sure he sells them and he does really well. But yeah. I don't have a studio like that to, and, you know, to store like hundreds of paintings in. I have my house. It gets, it gets full fast. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me tell you. Uh, do you have, when you, um, so whenever you're, you're painting, do you get in a, like a, a certain headspace? What do you, what do you, what's like a, like a, a standard procedure for you when you start painting? Standard procedure is uh, non-standard. So uh, depending on what I'm doing, like I just kind of get started without a plan very mm -hmm. often. I have a, like a very general general plan in terms of color assignment, um, but whatever tools that I have around me, that's basically what creates the painting. So let's see. Um, I just want to show this painting real quick. So this one, I started out with rollers. I had like some tiny little foam rollers and I said, we'll see what happens with this. Um, and I just started kind of rolling onto the canvas with, you know, those warmer colors in the background. And then I wanted to do a cooler, you know, color on top, like a splatter. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about snow cones or snowballs. Um, and so I was thinking also about um, the sweetened condensed milk and what it would look like if it was pouring from the top of the canvas instead of just being all over the, mm -hmm. you know, the snowballs. So it kind of is a process that's more, um, it's a living process. I don't plan very much of my artwork. I would have to if I was doing a lot of um, representational work. I think you have to plan more. Definitely, you do. Yeah, and I think that's kind of stressful. Yeah, I think there's it, a lot of demand on your brain and your mental capacity to be like, thinking, okay, I got to mix these colors because, you know, I'm planning on doing this specific drawing and yeah, that's, it's just a lot and it's fine. But if you're thinking all day, it's not necessarily what you want to be doing. You said baking, thinking, thinking. It's like, what are you baking all day? Yeah. My brain. That's about you, it. Uh, that's why I, was, that's why I <laughs> thought you were referring to like, you're just, yeah. just frying your brain. Yeah. Do you bake? No, I don't, and I shouldn't. I don't need to be anywhere around uh, a heating, like, no. I can cook for myself, all right, but I don't need to be baking. That's mm -hmm. like too, it's one of those things that, again, requires precision. I need to stay away from it. Yeah. yeah. Are you, when you write, are you pre uh, very precise? Uh, yes, and I have to be. I mean, mm -hmm. so creatively, I'm, uh, probably, I probably fixate on being precise even more than when I'm doing technical writing. Technical writing, you have to be very precise and objective and concise and all that stuff. But that is something I've done for such a long time that it's kind of natural. Yeah. Um, I will really wear myself out mentally doing creative writing because I'm one of those people that edits as I'm writing oh, to get it to be. Yeah, I edit as I'm writing. I'm I'm very much a recursive writer, so it's it's very circular. I'll get to the end of a paragraph and start thinking, I don't like that. I'll go back to the first sentence and change everything. I'm thinking about um, the music of the words as they go together. I'll read it out loud to see how does it sound. You know, that's what I'm like. I'll really fixate on how it sounds together, how the um, consonant sound and how they lend to like certain vowels and different notes and I'll play with the thesaurus and see if I can get a word that sounds better. Not, not by meaning. It won't be like, Oh, I want a bigger word. It's, it'll be more of, I want a word that means the same thing that might sound better musically in the sentence. Okay. So I'll, I'll play with all of that. And yeah. 
that gets really... for your creative writing. Yeah, for my creative. I don't do. I don't worry about that for uh, technical writing. No wonder you don't. You don't like writing. You're you're uh, uh, you're 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 uh, just beating yourself over the head for that to get like the the, the perfect type of creative. Yeah, I want know, it to be stories. perfect. Yeah, I, it, I feel like it needs to be perfect, and I don't feel like art needs to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. What? How come there's that disconnect though? Like for you, like how how do you not have that like connection with your with your actual like art, and then you're you're working with your your writing, your creative writing. How are they so just like complete 180? Um, I think it's because the re what I'm so infatuated with in art is where art can take me when I'm not uh, becoming too attached to the process. There are times when I'm I'm creating when I'm doing something artistically and I I've, I like allow a plan to kind of like sneak in a little bit, mm -hmm. and when that plan sneaks in, it can sabotage everything. Um, it'll just like, it'll be very upsetting because the second it, it changes, I'm no longer happy with the work and I don't want that to happen. So I prefer to be in a space of exploration and seeing what happens when I'm not, um, being too closely connected mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. And where's your work going on, going right now? Like where's it moving forward towards? So, um, right now. I am in a space of I'm, I'm resisting finding a niche, which is interesting because I think a lot of people do very well by having a niche. Um, I follow a lot of people online. I like to look at a lot of different work mm -hmm. and I don't see too many people have um, a lot of different types of artwork. I think, yeah. you know, I, I looked at your work and it did actually seem to be, uh, to have some variety in it, which is refreshing because I see a lot of people recreate what looks like the same piece over and over again. And I'm really resisting doing that. I think it's very marketable to do it. Um, but it's hard for me to be in that space of just like recreating the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's funny that, that, that idea, uh, because, it's very popular with like the 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 pinup digital artist, you know, or the 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 uh, the digital artists, the digital painters that that do these like very sultry, very uh, what is it called? Uh, I think you hear this a lot on on YouTube, spicy, spicy, uh, 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 uh like fan art of of like movie characters or like a, um of comic book characters. And they just do it over and over and over again, right? Yeah. And they got like hundreds of thousands of millions of followers. And don't get me wrong, the drawings are great, but like it's just the same, same track or, or mm -hmm. like, uh, like same track, different bass. I don't know. Or, or, um, I was just thinking about this the other day. It has nothing to do with art, but it's, it's kind of like it has to do with art. But like, uh, so there's video games out there that, uh, they don't really change video game. Like the, the genre of video games are like the same. It's the same over and over again. And people just eat it up. Like uh, right now there's like call of duty. Right. I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Right. Yeah. If you played like a call of duty ga game, like five years ago and played one now, the only like big change. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but the, 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 the main thing that's changed is like the graphics are better. But like the gameplay and like the like just what it is is the same thing over and over again, you know. And the the how it's just like a um, they just rewrap the skins with higher quality uh, imagery. But it's it's in its basic structure, like bare bones, it's the same thing. I know? mean, I don't think you're gonna find many things that are new. Uh, yeah. Like I'm yeah. not creating. I'm not creating anything that hasn't really been created before. What? Oh, really? No. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but like, I've I've had numerous conversations with other other artists about this, where you you uh the the niche is it niche or niche 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 yeah niche you got it niche Ni or is it niche. Well, some people actually, I think you can say it both ways. Okay. 
I've all right. Heard it so said both ways. So like the, the niche is like your type, like when you get in that area, when you get from my, how I see it, I don't know if it's possible. Uh, like how, I don't know if this is true. I mean, uh, when I see it, when you get into that niche, it's really darn hard to get out of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I could see like, like, let's just say this person. So like, I'm like, I'm tired of drawing this over and over and over and over again and, and putting it on there. Everyone loves it. I want to do something different. You know, I really do. Yeah. I, I actually heard stories of, 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 of other artists. Like um, this one artist does this specific type of uh, uh, stencil work. I don't want to name names, but I heard stories uh, of him talking to like gallery owners or other people. He's like, man, I'm getting, I, I'm so, I just can't, I'm getting tired of painting this. Yeah. And, 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 and his friends are like, you hit the jackpot, man. You could just, just keep doing that. And you'll, you'll, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a vending. It's like, it's an ATM machine of art. So yeah, but like, I, I have to do it all day, every day, you know, and it's like, um, I liken it to like a, a, a warehouse worker, right. Or like a person who, who works in a factory and they just, they just make widgets just over and over again. You know, they make widgets eight, hour, eight, eight hours a day and they get home and are like, man, I'm after five years of that, I'm like, I'm tired of making widgets. You yeah. Know? But so what we're really talking about is the difference between an artist and a craftsman. So if you're an artist, you're really just painting uh, from the heart, right? Like it's, it's emotional, it's intuitive, it's whatever you're feeling in a moment. That turns into a craft the second it becomes something that you can replicate and you do without thinking, you do without feeling. Yeah. And so you change the relationship that you have to the work when you do that. And once you do that, I mean, it's fine. And it is like, it is um, something that people have a high appreciation for, but you may not come away from the experience the same way. Yeah. Yeah, it like um, the so like yeah, as you see, you saw through my, my Instagram page, like I just do a, a a different amount of things. That's why I love sketchbooks so much. I like to you know, I just kind of right. play peter around with it, and sometimes the sketchbook looks the same, sometimes it it doesn't. You know, uh, I'm not beholden to anyone uh, buying the sketchbook. Uh, it, it, as a matter of fact, it's probably priceless because there's there's more hours in the sketchbook than some many of my works, you know. Like, and um, you know, um, it, it's it's a it's weird. Uh, that's that that terminology, craftsman. Yeah, I never thought about that in that context. Uh, it just sounds like uh, like uh, not, not terrifying, but like like dreadful it's restrictive yeah it's restrictive and it becomes a job and uh originally when i i i was a um a studio art major years ago and midway through my i was about to finish like my concentration in studio art and i stopped because there were deadlines and i said i'm not interested in making this a job i knew that i was not going to be the person that said i want a place to hire me I knew that like what I wanted to do, I wasn't going to get a job doing it. And I did, I couldn't foresee selling my artwork. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know back then how to go about doing that. Um, so I didn't, I just knew that that wasn't for me. And that's why I pursued writing. Um, I see Daniel, I see your question. Uh, you're asking, you say you don't have a plan. You struggle when you don't have a plan to draw or sketch something. What are some things you'd use to detach yourself from that mode of thinking and keep your process free? Yeah, that's, that's the reason that I, I make it a goal to do abstract art. Um, because if I do something that's representational and I do from, from time to time, I'm kind of like, I, I get in that phase where I kind of want to sometimes. Um, but I resist doing that to make sure that I, I do stay kind of free and, and detached. Um, to me, it is, I specifically want to make sure that what I'm doing is an activity um, that practices the art of detachment, that it's very, it's very intentional. It's not, um, 
it's not something that just happens or that I'm free from. I have to 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 really consider that. So that's why I like the the Pollock work, and that's why I like smudge paintings and stuff like that because they don't you can't really get too too tied to what it's going to end up looking like. So the the, the, the detachment part. Sorry, I'm like stuttering. Jeez, oh my gosh. <laughs> the, the, like say it, Matt. Just say the word. Uh, the uh, detachment. Your um. Is it um, kind of in the same light of, of the meditation where you're 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 uh, you're trying to release, remove your thoughts? Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, for sure. And to take away, like the objectivity of it, a little bit where you're where you're 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 uh, being critical of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's exactly what's happening. Um, so I will allow uh, some planning to to start in the beginning in terms of color. Like I think I said that before, I, mm -hmm. because I, you know, if I don't have any attachment to to what it comes out looking like. I mean, it'll, it could just be brown. And I mean, brown is fine if that's what you want, but I at least want the colors to go together. Yeah. I at least think, okay, I need to pick some really good colors to play with because I, from the second I get started, it's going to, that thinking process is going to be over and I'm switching into my intuitive side. Once I switch into that, I turn the thinking side off. I know that it's going to be whatever it's going to be. And that's what people are going to be you know, deciding whether or not they feel something for it. So once that's what I'm doing, I'm creating from feeling for people that can actually have a feeling. It's not supposed to be cerebral. It's not supposed to be something they can measure too much or try to quantify or, you know, objectify. It really is supposed to be about feeling and, and that's about it. What do you feel how, how how do you feel emotionally after you finish a work? So that's, I mean, the bit, the most noticeable feeling for me is, is taking place while I'm doing it. Okay. Um, and I noticed this so much more um, a few months ago when I was really getting into it. Like in the beginning, I was coming from a completely different place. I was like a little bit more stressed at the time. So I literally had a physical sensation in my chest, which felt like swelling, not in a negative way, like, oh, my heart's going to explode. Tr truly a positive, a positive emotion, like really feeling like my heart opening um, and just being very happy um, and, and relaxed. And I mean, that's the simplest way to put it. And then, you know, when I'm done, I'm just content. Now, I might not be content if I'm not very intentional about the colors in the beginning. I might just be a little sad, but uh, normally it's a good, it's a positive experience. Kind of like a, a moment of Zen after you've, you've had a long meditation uh, like session where you, yeah. you've, where you've, I've, I, I don't know, like, like content, like after I'll, I'll sometimes meditate and then, some day, some days I meditate, you know, when I feel like it, uh, sometimes uh, when I meditate, which I haven't done forever, uh, sounds weird when I st state it out loud. Like, that you meditate? Yeah. It sounds is like that a, because you're not doing it or is it just like weird just, to say? I think like, uh, it, just, it like sounds like a, a weird thing to say to me. <laughs> like, cause like, uh, yeah, it just sounds like a weird thing to say. Uh, um, Maybe because it, it's it's like um, there might be like this this like this thought of what people who meditated look like you know like uh, like this like like this this uh, preconception of what people that meditate like this the, the, the like the, the the hippie person I don't know uh, no, I just feel I don't feel weird about it because I think I think more and more people are doing it now and I think yeah. it's like it's becoming more and more normalized. Yeah, I've. I've said it, uh, I've been hearing a lot of people, uh, a lot of artists I've t spoke to, um, they meditate. But when I do it, uh, it has to be for a while where I, like all the thoughts are like gone or like after, like I'm so tired of actually thinking about thoughts or, or, or trying to remove the thoughts that eventually the thoughts kind of just like blur out, I guess. And then after that, I wake up feeling like, oh, I feel good. 
feel like uh like i have no problems now for like a few minutes right, right. <laughs> i guess that's how i feel like oh my gosh um kate um how long does your art process typically take when you're working on uh your 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 uh your pieces is there is it a long session or you do like one a day or you spend a, a long week when you're working a couple of days so when i first started i was i started um when it was pretty warm outside and that was like the best experience because i i would open the garage and i would be standing in the sunshine and i could probably create a painting over a two span day mm -hmm. because as i'm working a lot of it's drying yeah um and I can't do that with a lot of the work that I'm I'm doing right now. So I was I had like a couple of weeks where I would, you know, try to create a painting a day. Cause I I would spend easily four to six hours working on something, but just I have so many issues with not letting things dry because I love just being in the moment and doing, and it really can mess up what I'm doing uh, with the artwork. So I'm trying to be patient. I'm learning patience, which I should be doing if I'm actually approaching this in terms of meditation. I should mm -hmm. be like, yeah, meditation, patience kind of goes with that. I need to, to focus on that too. So sometimes I'm somewhere between one and three days for a piece. Mm -hmm. One and three evenings because it's like after work. Mm -hmm. Do you work on multiple pieces or you just work on one at a time? I'm getting better about, yeah. So I've realized that if I work on more than one piece at a time, I can kind of continue working instead of, oh, I worked to a point where now I just need to let things dry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm doing like a couple of different things at a time now. Maybe uh, oh, uh, the scale, you could increase the scale so you have more area to work with. Yeah, no, that would be great. But then, there, sure. then you have to have a place more to space. Store. Yeah, yeah. You more space. Yeah, I recently told everyone, I was like, I think I'm going to have to start doing things a lot smaller uh, because I don't want to continue taking up space. I've, when I first started, I was like, oh, this is an awesome idea. I can hang art on all of the walls in my house because that's the ultimate goal first. And then yeah. when someone buys something, I can send it to them and then I can create something new and put it on that space in the wall and get to enjoy it until until that one gets gets sold. But um, mostly everything is covered now. I've gotten to that point. You can do it uh, salon style or is it saloon style? I think it's salon style where they just like, they hang everything from, from the top of the wall to the bottom. They just fill up the whole thing. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't mind it. You can just like, yeah. it's just like panels upon panels. Right. So that's what you can do. Uh, Good advice. You know, if you feel like you're running out or you don't have enough um, painting room or like wall space to hang your paintings, I think, yeah. like, I'm just looking at your wall space right now. You could literally have, you have a lot of, you could hang more. Oh, but this is the bedroom and I can't go too crazy in here. Oh, you can't, you can't yeah. just that, go, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't go too crazy. Yeah. Uh, this, this is the, this has to be like a sanctuary to a degree. So your, so your room's a sanctuary? Yeah, for sure. That. Does is there like an actual TV? Do you have a TV in your in your room, or because no. um, I hear like a lot of people uh, designate certain areas of functionality, like they they like I the room the bedrooms for sleeping don't have anything in there. Just there's there's a bed, maybe a book, and yeah. that's it. You know, are, are mean, you that I, type? I obviously have the computer in here, but that's that's about it. And we have like one television that's reserved for the living room only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any techniques that you're using with your work that are uh, that are like something that you do specifically? Because I noticed in some of your work you had like this grading look, uh, grading texture look that looked like oceans. Yeah, I love using different tools and my paintings. And so when I first started, I was um, I was using modeling paste, mixing that with my paint. Modeling paste. Yeah, modeling paste. Uh, there's a company called Liquitex that sells mm -hmm. that, and it's really, really thick. 
and you can mix it with whatever paint that you're using. Um, and it goes on um, pretty smoothly, but it dries hard. Mm -hmm. They have some that dry hard and then they have some that um, dry with, it's, it's kind of like a gel. So it's kind of like, it has some give when you push it. But I started using that and um, I was like, well, how am I gonna create texture in this besides like the obvious? Cause I saw so many works where people used, um, what are they, the palette knives? I started painting mm -hmm. with those to begin with. And then I started playing with combs, like just mm -hmm. hair combs and, and carving through the, the stuff. And that dried really cool. And then I could paint even more on top of it. And then I found uh, lots of little tools that are different. I have some here. Let me see. I think I, I asked my little brother to send me something and just like send me something to create texture with. And I got like these crazy little things like this. I had yes. never seen these. I'd never seen them before. And I just got all different kinds. Well, those are some, those are like advanced advanced palette knives there yeah yeah i've never seen this stuff i haven't even used all of them but yeah i'm i'm really excited to see um what i can create with some of this stuff i just the, i love playing with different things so they almost look like weapons they kind of do they look like you you, you wouldn't want to get shanked with one of those in a park <laughs> <lot. laughs> yeah you know what? Like, what you got? <laughs> Don't mess with me. I, got... I would be scared if I saw if I was approaching someone and they had something like that. <laughs> like, what is that? Stay away. Uh, <laughs> no, those are really cool. I have I have not seen palette knives like that. I've seen mm. um I've encountered like um I have one like unique brush. It's not even a brush, it's like a um silicone molded brush that has like bristles that are really thick, but not like, not palette knives that look like that. Yeah. So uh, I imagine those make some pretty wicked uh, texture textures on your pieces. Yeah. And I think just, um, you just have to look at like anything like, mm -hmm. Oh, I broke my clothes hanger. What can I do with it? Mm -hmm. It's not garbage anymore. It, it's potentially something you can use. Daniel, do you, I have, do I keep all my art supplies out at all times or do I pack up supplies after each use? I have lots of supplies in the garage. I have supplies in my room on a cart. Uh, nothing. I mean, it's, it's organized. I at least have it in a jar, like within the cart, like everything's kind of like organized, but I have a little bit of everything in here and in the garage. Um, the garage is a little bit of a mess. I don't feel the need to keep things as organized in there, even though I have like an organization system. Um, but if it's in my room, you know, I want it to be kind of visually pleasing. I like looking at it. I like seeing all the, all the stuff. So yeah, I have, I have stuff kind of out and about. Kate, do you have any advice that you could give to other artists? Uh, biggest advice is to be willing to experiment. Um, there's a lot, I mean, you can, you can learn a lot by watching what other people do online, but if you're not willing to experiment, it's going to be a slow process learning, like self-learning, if that's what you're interested in. Um, I think you just need to, to play around with stuff and, and be willing for it to like kind of go south. Like, like I said, don't be attached to the outcome. Just play with, you know, whatever you thought you were going to throw away because it was broken take it into the garage and try to do something with it and see what'll happen. And yeah. if it, if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't, and you know, I'm not going to do that again. You know, just be willing to play. There, there is, um, I, I've, uh, there is a, uh, like an unwillingness to, to experiment as uh, like, I, I'm noticing that a lot. Or like, you don't see as many people like testing odd things. You know, oh, the ones that do are like anomalies. Um, yeah. And I think uh, it, boy, from my experience, it boils down to a lot of um, like the fear of like failing or like uh, messing up. But like when you're doing when you're doing this work, where's what's the, the measure of failure? Right. Like there's not really who you who are you basing it off of? What artists are you looking at? You know? Yeah. And if you're experimenting, there really can't be a failure because experimenting, you might have, you hypothesize that it may look a certain way, yeah. but if you, 
you treat it like an experiment, there really is no right or wrong way. It's just an exploration. You're just going to see what happens. And that should be the point of it anyway. It shouldn't be, you know, to, I don't know. If you want to enjoy it, it should really just be an experiment. And a, you should walk away from it with a sense of play and excitement. And that's what sketchbooks are for. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, to just like totally mess up, you know, just mess up in your sketchbook. Yeah. And if you're not showing it to anyone, it really doesn't matter what it looks like. But what if you are so showing it to someone? Well, if you're showing it to someone and, and you consider it a failure, then you can, I guess, talk about how you did it anyway. How and great. Make it motivational. How great of a failure it is. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I did a painting. I started on a painting and I hated it and I thought it was a failure. And then uh, I waited some time, like two days. And I said, no, that's not a failure. That's the background for a really cool piece of art that I'm going to do now. And you just got to give it, give it time, give it a day or two, even if you didn't like it. And I'm sure it'll change. We were, we were talking about, I want to, I want to interject this, this thought because we were talking about it at the, at the beginning, uh, before the, the live stream about like saying words and how it, it cause you had some really cool philosophical, like things to talk about, like how you, when you, when you say a word out loud, it, 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 it triggers a response positive or negative more mm -hmm. powerful than if just thinking it. Yeah. So I heard you, you had mentioned being <clears throat> the idea of being nervous before starting. Something oh yeah. Like this. And I, you know, before I even got on, I was starting to feel my heart kind of like race a little bit. And I thought in my head, Oh, I'm feeling nervous. And then I, and then the second we got on, I said, I'm feeling excited. Mm -hmm. I knew that I needed to be really specific and call that out because I know like physiologically your heart's going to race whether you're excited or you're nervous. So I just wanted to be in a state where I was like, this is really pleasurable and exciting that we're doing this. It's nothing to be nervous about. Like make sure that I'm creating a good experience for myself and, and for anyone watching. Yeah. And, st and stating it out loud, um, as you said, chemically your, your, your brain doesn't discriminate between like, those two emotions. Yeah. It's so, it's really weird. It's weird that you could feel the same physiologically, but you have the power to, to, to pick which one, you know, that yeah. you want to filter it through. I've been, I've been hearing, um, not hearing, but watching some, some videos about like people making dream boards and like setting up these goals and putting the dream boards, like the dream boards, People think that's like a silly idea, but like what happens is uh, um, like the subconscious doesn't like discriminate between the imagery uh, of being like what's happening with happening with your life now and what's going to happen later on. And like having like that, that dream board imagery facilitates uh, a subconscious action that supposedly will bring you closer to that, that goal. You know? No, yeah, that's that's really true. I really agree with that. Um, it's very uh, it's very powerful, and this is really bizarre. But there are some things that I think about doing that I won't tell anybody about. I try not to tell people about it because, say, I have a goal, and I'll I'm gonna filter it through something else. Like I might say, I'm gonna plant a garden, and I'm gonna have tomatoes and cucumbers and corn. If I tell somebody that and they share excitement with me, they share too much excitement with me, I feel like I've already done it. And I'm just like, I don't need to do it now. And then I'll, then I'll mourn over the fact that I didn't do it. So I kind of think if I'm going to do something, it needs to be within my head and I just need to execute it and then, and then share it with someone. That's, I think that's kind of weird, but I did read something about people feeling that way. Um, like people that struggle with motivation shouldn't necessarily share everything that they're planning on doing. Cause if they feel like they get any kind of validation over it, they may decide not to do it. Yeah. It's like the, 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 uh, it, you get the same like good feeling from the thought almost. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, like, oh, I feel real good about this idea of about, you know, being a millionaire. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good now. <laughs> I'm a millionaire now. I don't need to worry about anything. And then you're like, two years later, like, you're not, I thought I was a millionaire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's why meditation and visualization and some of those things are so effective for some people and not effective for others. Um, if you if you believe that it's working and you put yourself in the state of mind and then you, I don't know, it can work for you. But if you're not going to do the actions too because you believe it, you won't have any results. Yeah, the, the um, it's like habit forming mm -hmm. you know uh kate do you have a dream project if i did i don't think i would share what it was oh, after all that i've just told you yeah. <laughs> do you have a, a a a mini project that you're working on no you know i have uh I have some ideas for things and they're kind of just in, in my mind in exploration mode right now. I wish I could share something concrete. I really don't have anything um, that I feel too comfortable sharing. Mm -hmm. I have some ideas that I'm trying to work on in the background and I'm having trouble executing it because of time. So I will just keep that to myself for now. But yeah, I am. I do have some things that I'm really excited about. That's very cool. Um, I wish you could share. Maybe in the future, you'll yeah. uh, you'll share some of them. Um, don't share your big project. Don't do that. Right. I know. I shouldn't. I'm gonna keep my mouth closed. So, Kate, you sound like you have a a, a lot of like this like this like that philosophical background that uh, that I want to I want to hear more about. Um, do you have any like guiding life advice that you'd like to share? Oh, that's a big question. Um, the most important thing is you need to monitor your thoughts. Your thoughts control everything in your life. And if you can only focus on getting your thoughts under control, I think you'd be a lot better off. Anyone would be a lot better off. And, um, but better said, don't try to control your thoughts. Just do something else in the meantime. I kind of think um, like for anyone who's struggling through work, like jobs that they're not happy in or, or relationships that they're not happy in or um, they live somewhere that they don't, they think, oh, there's probably somewhere better for me. My best advice would be assume that it will never get better. Assume that if you get another job, it won't be any better. Assume that if you're with somebody different, it's not going to be any better. Assume if you move to another city, it's not going to be any better. And with that assumption, how can you make the current situation that you have better? That's it. Like as simple as can be. Focus on how to make whatever you're in more bearable. And then you might be, you might end up with a different job. You might end up yeah. with a different person. But if you don't focus on just making whatever you're doing now, you know, maintainable, or, I mean, you can't run to the next thing and then it's going to be better. Yeah. Like the, the grass is always greener mentality. Yeah. Um, and um, the moment you said like the first sentence, I started thinking, Oh, thoughts become things. I've heard this quote. Yeah, they do. You know, yeah. You know, where, the you can if you think bad things all day long you're going you're going to see nothing you're going to see nothing but the bad you know like, like which is why uh we uh i do the the whole journaling thing yeah. you know, where, where I, I write try to write something positive even um to kind of it, it's kind of interesting how it kind of went full circle where you're, you're talking about uh con controlling your thoughts it's hard though like it takes yeah. a man, like a, like a, a like just a, like just, you have to stop yourself. It can be like a, a positive feedback loop where you're, you're just going in, in this, 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 you know, what's it, what's it, what's that thing that goes, 
I'm thinking wheelbarrow, but it's it's a uh, it's a ride. Like a Ferris wheel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I kept thinking wheelbarrow. I was like, why am I thinking wheelbarrow? Why am I like what is this thing that people ride on? Not a wheelbarrow. Definitely not. Yes. So it's like yeah. just a Ferris wheel. <laughs> or uh, uh um it's or a Ferris wheel on its side where they're you're on horses. Oh you carousel. That is? Carousel, yeah. yes. Gosh, I am not uh this I'm is a pretty. game, right? We're playing. Yeah, we're like game. sure. We're like playing charades, you're on it. You're on a you're on a wheel, and you're up and down on horses. And sometimes there's whales. Sometimes there's little little like little carriages for some re odd reason. Animals. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so it's like a carousel, right? Where it just moves over and over uh, in a circle. Um, yeah, the, the, the that that negativity could just be like a, a like a, a cycle, and that's what uh, like like all this social media can kind of do it too. Like uh, you got to tap out from that. Like it is this, it it's just this, like, it's like a roller coaster of just negativity sometimes. And you got to like, I got to get yeah. out of here. This is people just get mad too easily on, on, on these platforms. Yeah. That's an interesting on all, all on its own. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, uh, you, you just like, I got to tap out from that. Like I gotta focus on me and work on these this artwork. I don't have time to look at everyone's uh, negative things that they're saying. Like you know, like oh, there's it's it's so. The thing is, I, it's much. Was it like it's much easier to think negatively than than to think positive? Um, I was listening to a a podcast or an audio book where, like, so they they had these group of kids, you know, and they had like um uh, they had um. Uh, uh, a bunch of really like you know not scholars but like a bunch of good kids and they they are like well this one kid he's he's just he's just acting out you know he like we you know he's he's, he's misbehaving you know he's, he's you know he's not he's, he's 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 falling behind let's let's stick him let's stick him with these this group of good kids and hopefully and, and the group of good kids will bring him up you know they'll raise him up to to their level or or uh psychologically it'll, it'll, they'll at least Maybe they'll rub on this good this uh, this kid, and maybe he'll uh, do a little bit better in class or in 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 group in these group settings, right? Right. Are you there? Yeah. I'm you're here. like you're like fragmenting. Um, it's probably my internet. Um, but what happened is they they found out that it was the opposite. Like that one 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 kid uh, led to the other kids uh, misbehaving because it's easier to do to do that than to actually do the other way around. Yeah. I mean, there's like this, uh, we're neurologically wired a certain way and those synapses start firing and the ones that we, that fire are the ones that we train. So you, yeah, whatever you think is going to be easier to, I was like a meditation app. It's guided meditation. Yeah. And one meditation one day was about think your happiest thoughts. That's, I mean, it was that simple and you're supposed to identify like the three happiest ones in your life and small as that you're like trying to identify, well, what is the happiest moment? Like I couldn't pinpoint it and I'm mm -hmm. trying to, I'm trying to pick three, you know, from a lifetime and I'm, I'm just like struggling and what does your mind do? Sometimes the mind is like, well, I can definitely go to like the most negative. Like I know yeah. what those are. You focus on those negative ones and you're like, this was horrible that this happened. That is like a red flag for me. Like if I, they're just asking, well, what are three of the best in my life? And you're like, not really sure. Like what those moments would be. Uh, yeah. It's much, much easier to find that the, the, the downers. Yeah. We don't, we don't, like, cause we don't, um, I guess, uh, I guess we don't chase those highs. Like it's like those, those high, like those upbeat moments are like, they're not as powerful as like the, 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 the negative moments in life, I guess maybe that might. So like we kind of subconsciously gravitate towards that because it's like, um, maybe kind of like self, it could be like self defeatist to some extent. Maybe I don't know. Well, think about it. Like you have a success in your life. 
Are you going to every day think, oh, I succeeded. I did, I did so well at this. It made me so happy. I wouldn't probably focus on it like I would something negative. Something yeah. like, oh, this is really bothering me. I don't, I don't like this. I don't, you know, I'd feel, I'd feel guilty to say I did this and I'm so, I feel guilty to focus on it for some reason. And that's a, that's a horrible like relationship to have. And that you yeah. see about focusing on a win, you know, in your life, you you think, oh, that's egotistical. I can't focus on what made me happy or that I had that success. Yeah. So maybe maybe uh, you should start journaling and writing. I'm super awesome as well. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I should do that. I did. I did start with that gratitude uh, journaling. The three things in the morning. I do think that's helpful. I think that's really great. Yeah. Did you write anything today? No. No? No. Did you, did you miss a day? I just, sometimes I really just like think about it. Like I try okay. to just like list things in my in my head, especially when I'm doing those meditations. And yeah, that that easiest one to go to is like I'm so grateful to have woken up and to have air in my lungs. And I usually come back to I'm so grateful to have clean water to drink and a, a place oh, to yeah. have a shower. So many people don't even have water. So I'm so grateful for that. I'll say, I'll write down sometimes. I'll, I'll write down often, like, uh, I'm grateful to have a roof over my head, shelter, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll like, uh, um, or the another go to is like, I'm grateful that I actually got up at the time that I wanted to get up because it's, it's not really the greatest. It's, this, this morning, this morning sucks. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy that I got up. <laughs> yeah, no, the it's morning. Such a silly so the little morning, thing. The morning, and I wake up at like two five because I can't sleep. It's like I'm grateful that I woke up, and even though I can't go back to sleep, I'm laying in a comfortable bed. Yeah, and it's quiet, and it's it's peaceful where I live, and I have a partner beside me. Like I can at least focus on the good things, right? Or, I mean, I could just like think about, I can't believe I'm up at 245. My day is going to be awful. But we know it's how gonna far be, that's going to get us. Yeah. You, when you think, when you, when you wake up saying, oh, this is, this, this day is going to be trash, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to manifest that trash. Yeah. You're going to make it, you're going to make that day into a trashy day. And you're going to uh, become a trash person. Tra trash. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, that's why, what was it like, uh, some quotes were like, uh, win the morning, you win the day or something. There's some like yeah. real truth to that, you know, like just if you're, if you, if you, if you really nail that, that morning, dial it in and, and we're able to knock it out of the park, um, the, the, the rest of the day typically goes at least it, it, uh, let's say that your, your morning was like, like skyrocketing into, into the, the stratosphere. Right. And then let's say that it, like, of course it tapered down, tapers off and goes back down a little bit. Uh, at least the, 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 the tapering down is going to be higher. If you, uh, higher than if you're like, well, I didn't do, I didn't really make a successful day or successful morning. You're like, let's say my, my morning was like, beep, right. You're going to go back down. It's going to be lower. So like, if you just conquer that morning, at a high, at a, like a high point, it's of course it's not gonna that high level is not gonna stay there. It's gonna kind of tip down, but still you're gonna have a like a above average day. I don't know. Yeah, sure. You're gonna average it out. You're gonna average it out. That's what I think. But I'm gonna suck myself out into thinking that. Like I gotta, I gotta like just have a good average day. Make sure that I'm I'm uh, doing above average on most things so that I'm successful in whatever I'm successful at. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Kate. I want to ask. Um, we're, we're getting near the end. It's fe I'm I'm feeling. I don't know about you. Are you yeah, feeling, for sure. You feeling fatigued? Um, what I'm what I would like to ask is, what would you like the viewers to to get from this uh, this interview? What would be like the if you could encapsulate the main thing that you would like to uh, get across to the viewers, what would that be? Um, I think it's, it's really great if anyone's interested in doing art, uh, but they know that 
it's achievable for anybody. Art doesn't have to look a certain way. It doesn't yeah. have to. Um, there's no, there's no um, guidelines or there's no marker for what it needs to look like. It's okay for it to be what it is. And when you can create something like that, you should be able to feel the same way that you can be however you can be. You can be in that moment. Um, most people should just learn to feel able and know that comparison really is the thief of joy. Don't worry about what other people are creating. Uh, don't think that you're not artistic or creative. Everybody has the creative spirit that's in everybody. It's, it's crazy that anyone would think that they don't have the means to create something. I look at so much artwork that, um, you know, the mark of a successful artist is not what they're creating. It's how prolific they are. That applies to any type of art. That applies to any type of music. Um, anyone who likes, I mean, you might find some music on the radio to be completely trash, but truly um, those people are successful and they're successful because they continue to create. They don't stop. I mean, if you're wanting to, to call yourself an artist, just create. Just continue doing it, and and that's about all it takes. If it's whatever you do, that's whoever you are. So just be. Two things from that. Um, I, I'm going to write this down. I wrote this down right now, so I don't forget it. I'm going to put it in my journal because I think it's a really, really good quote. I don't know if you if you stole it or if that's your your original thought. Which one uh, was that? Comparison is the thief of joy. Not my not my quote. Uh, Definitely something I've read, but yeah, that uh, that, is true. that that's a really strong qu quote um, because uh, a lot of new artists will do that comparison and then they get demoralized because their, their work doesn't add up to or equal them, but the, the equal the, the artists that they're aspiring to be or the people that they're, they're like using as mm -hmm. heroes and that what they don't, what I think the 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 mentor or the artist that they're looking up needs to probably, uh, yeah, uh, needs to um, I feel it too. Um, needs to know that there's a lot of hours between those the the, the, the work that you're seeing and you and you don't know, right? That there's a big disconnect there. But that's a good quote. I'm going to write that down. Uh, I'm going to put it's going to it's going to have Kate Simon Simon underneath it. Simon. But no, that that's not. It's not from me. I mean, and I'm going to put I a just, question mark right next to it. Yeah, put a question uh, mark. <laughs> yeah. An asterisk, um, uh, and some, you know, um, and like maybe some more, like multiple asterisks, you know, like just like and a bunch of question marks behind it, and, and an exclamation, and an exclamation point. And um, a and then, what? And an at symbol. An at symbol. Yeah. Um, I totally forgot the other part. It just went. It just escaped me because I that that was a very um, poignant part. Now I just remember it. Uh, they're creating part. Yeah. People don't like people that uh, want to be artists. They need to create. They they they, they just need to create. Stop uh, comparison. You comparing yourself to other people and just work. You know. What was it like work work work? Like what was this quote that I heard? Like you just it's it's basically the this quote that Rihanna? I heard was like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, no! Please, no! Uh, <laughs> oh, Rihanna, yeah, it was, it was, it's definitely Rihanna. No, um, gosh, no, I got that in my head. <laughs> well, yeah, just work. That's that's all it has to do. That that's the basic answer to it. You know, uh, make work, and don't worry about what the people think about it. And yeah, don't focus try, yourself. only do. Yeah, yeah, Yoda. I don't. I think it's like an old Japanese proverb or something. I'm not really sure, but maybe Yoda said it too. It's like do or do not. Yeah. Right. Like there is, or like I'll try. And like uh, Yoda says, I'll try like uh, um, Luke Skywalker, Skywalker, Skywalker is like, all right, I'll try. He's like, no, do or do not. You know, yeah. there is no try. Um, yeah. Um, Kate, where can people find you on the interwebs? So I have uh, Instagram, so at Kate Simon Art, Facebook.com slash K 
Kate Simon Art. And then, of course, my website, which is katesimonart.com. They can find me at all of those wonderful places. Kate, I just want to say it's been uh, really nice talking to you. Um, I really do appreciate your time. Thank you so it's much. It's a pleasure. For, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for answering uh, all the guests' questions that we had and to, for answering my questions and talking with me. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, it was great. I'd love to come back anytime. Yes, definitely. It could be in the future. Definitely. I will definitely keep you in there. De I'm going to say definitely as many times as I can. Definitely. How about that? Definitely. 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 Uh, <laughs> um, for those that are watching, don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel. We do. I do really appreciate you. And, you know, it's it's not taken for granted. I'm tired. I got cotton mouth. It's granted. Great. Graded. Granted. There we go. I have the words. I have, I know words. That's what I know. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Pearson out. Wait, I got, I got, I'm not, I'm not even on the brand. There we go. It's right here. Damn.